Hey, this is Landon from Quinta 5 Axis CNC. You're watching build vlog number three. And if you haven't already, click that like and subscribe button and let's get to the video. In the last video, I showed you how I put together my frame and my Y axis. If you haven't seen it already, you should check it out. In comparison, today's video will be very dense. I'm gonna show you how I put together most of the mechanical components on my machine. And I'm also gonna give you some tips on how to design and prototype for yourself. I started off today's video by assembling my Z-axis. It's made of a 50-50 aluminum extrusion sandwiched between two linear rails. I designed my Z-axis to have a lot of travel, over 500 millimeters, which gives me the option to cut stock within a larger work envelope. As you just saw, I drilled out holes in the extrusion on the press, then tapped out those holes with an M3 tap and then use screws to attach my rails and extrusion together. Then I moved everything over to the bench where it all got assembled. This piece is made out of half inch thick aluminum and it allows me to connect my Z-axis to my gantry. I used HG15 bearing blocks as the carriages for the rails. My ball screw will connect to my Z-axis using 3D printed mounting blocks like such, but first I'll connect it to the mount. I'm going to be honest, this isn't exactly how this whole Z-axis assembly goes together, but for video purposes, it was easiest to show it this way. My Z-axis slides into the blocks like such, and then I clamp the ball screw to the extrusion. As you can see, I really be putting my blood, sweat, and tears into this project. And this is just a little reminder to go ahead and bury your aluminum after cutting it. So lastly, I just attach the Z-axis assembly onto my gantry, and that's pretty much how it all goes together. So while we're on this snack break, I'm going to discuss my design and prototyping process. The first thing I like to do when I'm designing a part is think about its function. And then I see if I can think of a way to give a single component multiple functions. For example, this X-axis stepper motor mount also serves as a spacing block from my X-axis ball screw, and I think that's one of the indicators of good design. Secondly, I try not to overthink the part when I initially model it in CAD. It's really easy to get carried away with these really complex designs, and when you bring it into the real world, they don't even work. For example, this was supposed to be my Y-axis stepper motor mount, but what it ended up being was trash. My stepper motor didn't even fit, and it just didn't mount well on the machine. I ended up designing a way simpler looking component that actually worked. I found myself printing a single part multiple times, whether to improve the spacing and hole placement, or just to improve its overall functionality. CAD is really good for catching early issues, but sometimes you just need to see the component in the real world. The last thing I'm going to discuss is designing for assembly and designing for loading. It's a really good idea to be mindful of how everything is going to go together. The reason I bring this up is because it's pretty easy to have a screw placement on a component which might make it impossible to assemble. Also, you should be mindful of the loads a part is going to experience and design accordingly by putting gussets or fillets in areas that will experience high stress. That's all I have for now. Hopefully it can be useful to you. Now let's get back to the build. So then it was time to show you all how I assembled my AB head. It's all made of 3D printing components. I only plan on milling foam with this machine, so it should be plenty rigid. I used a thrust bearing, timing belt, and a timing pulley as the drive mechanism. They all attach to this block and eventually connect to my Z axis.
I dropped in the NEMA 17 stepper motor and then attached the timing belt to the timing pulleys. This piece will hold my brushless spindle and allow it to rotate while being attached to the rest of the assembly. As a side note, I designed my AB head not to have any axial loads on the stepper motors. This is why my B axis is directly driven while my A axis stepper motor is attached to a timing belt to prevent axial loading, which may cause a loss of steps. This was one of the most satisfying assemblies to see come together during the whole project because I put a lot of hard work into this one, from redesigning the timing pulleys multiple times to get the tension on the belts just right, or to reprinting the components to adjust for spacing and strength. This assembly took a lot of trial and error, and I was finally happy to see all my hard work come to fruition. In the last section of this video, I'll give you all an overview of how I put together my stepper motor mounts for my X, Y, and Z axes. My Y-axis is dual driven by two NEMA 23 stepper motors connected to these 3D printed mounting blocks. These couplers allow me to translate the power from the stepper motors to the ball screws. My Z-axis uses a high torque NEMA 23 stepper motor from Open Builds attached to a quarter inch thick aluminum mounting plate and a 3D printed spacing block. Lastly, here's a look at my X-axis. As always, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to check out my others. In the next video, I'll show you how I wired everything up and give you a look at my Meso controller. Feel free to leave this video a like and subscribe if you want to stay updated on the progress of this build and comment your questions below.